Hey guys, so welcome back to Photoshop. Today we're going to talk about a CMYK halftone. A halftone is a way to um, take a photographic image, break it into dots that you can shoot to a silk screen. Um, newspapers are printed using halftones. Uh, your printer prints using only cyan, yellow, magenta, and black. And so how can I take this image and translate it only into those four colors? Um, in addition to that, I have decided to add a little speech bubble to the little birds. Um, a lot of my students ask, how do I combine CMYK halftones with something that isn't going to be halftoned? So something like text, you would want to keep crisp and black, whereas the photographic element, we'd want to halftone. So with this, I just drew this with the brush tool, nothing fancy. I've got the white bubble text and the text as well. So I'll use both of these in my process here. But um, this is taken from the Cal Falcon Cam on Berkeley campus. These are little falcon chicks. They just hatched the other day. Um, they're super cool, you should check them out. Um, so let's get started. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna select the background layer. That's the one that I wanna halftone and I don't want to have to on the other layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn those off for the time being. So the most important thing to do right now is to check your image size. So you're gonna to go to image, image size. This is really important. This is giving me a lot of information. This is telling me that the image is um, 7.8 inches wide by four. And right now I actually want to tell Photoshop the size that I wanna print this out at even if that means that Photoshop will have to draw more dots. Normally you don't want to artificially inflate image size because it doesn't actually create more resolution. You know, it's, it's just going to be a blurrier version of the image that you're starting out with. But in this particular instance, because in, during making a halftone dot, we're losing information, it makes sense to actually um, add more blur so that Photoshop has more room to work. I'm going to just add more size to the image. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is let's, let's say that we want to print it out 10 by five and a half. And what I want is I actually want the resolution to be 600. Now people do this different ways. I just find that this works really well. It's a good, it's a reliable resolution for what I am doing. Uh, traditionally sending something to the printer is at 300 DPI, but we're going to be putting dots down on it. And so this helps me draw rounder, more crisp edged dots. I used to do it at 300 DPI, and I, after trying it out and drawing a bigger dot, but breaking it down from 600 DPI, it just gives me um, a, a better result. So this is this is what I've got going on right now. And you can see that it's, it's actually artificially enlarging this image. It's a bigger file, but there's not really any more information. It's just gonna be blurrier. Um, but it's better for Photoshop to do that than for the filter to try to do this. So now that I have a, whoa, whoa, sorry, now that I have a larger image and I'm just zooming out so you can see it, what I want to do is I want to put it in CMYK mode. Um, so this is really important here. Um, so I'm going to go under image mode, CMYK color. So most images that you are going to be working with start out in RGB color. Um, so we want to throw ahead, go ahead and throw this into CMYK color. This will not work if you don't put it in CMYK color. Do not flatten it. I have those layers for a reason. Thank you. Very good. So now what I can do is I can look at my channels. So usually channels lives like in the history panel. Like usually, hang on, sorry. I've been moving my thing around. Usually channels is right here in the same tab group as layers. So um, depending on which version you're looking at, you want to open up the channels. And so now that it's in CMYK mode, I can click from one channel to the next and you can see how that's breaking down the image. So when I click on the magenta layer, you can see that the little chick's mouths are bright magenta. That makes a lot of sense. When I click on the yellow layer, I can see that the feet are yellow and that makes a lot of sense too. And, and it's important to kind of keep track of these. Um, so now what I want to do is I've got my click, make sure you click all of them because you don't want to accidentally half tone only one of your channels. You want to click, you want all of the channels to be selected when we do this, but it's just good to see and know what the channels look like and where they are. So now I'm going to go under filter, pixelate, color halftone. And 
for this resolution, I think a 10 pixel radius is a very safe bet. You can bring it down to an 8 pixel radius, that will also work on your screen, but I have found with halftones and screen printing that if you are pushing the boundaries of what your screen can hold, that the printing actually gets really tricky because too much ink will travel through the mesh, it tends to bleed, I've had a lot of issues. It may just be that the speedball ink is really runny, but um, play it safe and give yourself a slightly more reliable dot if you are worried about printing. Um, you can push it down to eight if you are feeling like you're a master at squeegee pulling. Um, so there's my 10 pixel radius. Also, if you want a bigger dot, you can absolutely go up from here. Um, that will cause you no problem at all. It's just a matter of clarity of image and the aesthetic that you're going for. I've definitely seen people go for kind of like a um, pop art, really big dot. It's kind of a look. It depends on what you want. So coming down here, these channels, these numbers here are actually really important. So channel number four is actually the black... Well, it won't let me click the channels right now. But channel number four is your black channel. So that means that the, the black channel will be displaying at a 45 degree angle, right? So we'll look at the dots and they'll be in rows that are at 45 degree angles, just like this. Channel number three is the yellow channel. And that means that the dots will be arranged at a 90 degree angle, like this. And what really matters here is the amount of degrees between the angles. So you what, what that does is having this set amount of distance between your angles um, lays in a little rosette shape. You'll see it in a second. And what that does is it has the least amount of optical distortion. Now, depending on what you're interested in, you might actually be fascinated with some optical distortion. My advice to you is write down these numbers um, beforehand so that you can put them back in if you don't like the distortions that you get. You know, So just go ahead and jot these down on a piece of paper because Photoshop will just pull up the last inserted numbers and it doesn't really have a record of what the starting numbers were. So just, just go ahead and jot those down and then you can play around with them and see what you get. Me, I'm going for something that's fairly photographic, so I'm going to keep these as they are. And that is a CMYK halftone. So you can see how the bird is being displayed by a combination of all of these different dots. So um, when I zoom out, you can see how photographic it is. When I zoom in, we can see how it's really just those four colors and the transparently overlapping with each other. It's actually a really incredible process. If you look at your newspaper up close, this is how it's done. And so what I could do, if I was only printing the photograph, I could go over to my channels, I could click on one of my channels, print it, click on another channel, print it, click on another channel, send that to the printer. You can see this is the 90 degree channel. Um, and then this is your 45, these are black channel. So the other thing that comes up, though, is that people want to include something that isn't half-toned. So in this instance, we've got our speech bubble. It's my birthday. And the way I want to do the speech bubble is I actually want to take the white shape of the speech bubble and combine it with the background layer. Because I don't actually want to print the rock texture underneath my speech bubble. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and click turn them both on and I'm going to shift click the two of them. If you're on a Mac, I think it's, um, it's a different one. Play around. And then I'm going to right click the two of these and merge those layers. So I'm just merging the background with the white speech bubble. So now when I go to my channels, my channels will have that speech bubble as no dots printed there. And that will keep it white and kind of give me that sort of cut paper speech bubble look. So the way this works now, is I don't want to accidentally print the it's my birthday text on every single channel, right? I only want to print it on the black channel, right? So what I want to do is I want to actually turn off the text until I get to printing the black channel. So I'm going to go ahead and print the cyan channel without the text. I'll just print it like this. Actually, there's one other trick that I recommend for you guys. Um, let's just take a step back before I send things to the printer. 
Um, I'm going to actually ex crop my image real quick here. So here's your crop tool. Normally when you're cropping, you're cropping inward, but I'm actually going to recommend that you crop outward. Um, excuse me. Let me undo that real quick. There we go. Now I'm cropping outward and it will have a white background here. And you'll see why I'm going to do this in a second. So I'm just giving myself a little bit of border around my image. Say that looks great. So now when I go to my channels, the border is included. So I got my cyan layer and I want to make sure that I've turned off my bubble text. So I can go ahead and send this to the printer. And so I would go file print. And since you all are a bunch of screen printers, the thing that I'm going to recommend for you is registration marks. And okay, I got I went a little bit overboard with these borders. C'est la vie. But the idea here is that if you give yourself a border, we'll just pretend that we're printing on tabloid size paper. Oh. Oh, never mind. We'll just, we'll just, you can see these little registration guys in the corner here. The idea here is that if you want to print with targets, which can help you line up the colors really tightly. The problem is, is you don't want the target so close to your image that you can't have a border. Um, and I know that people always forget to tape out the targets, so you can kind of save yourself a little bit of trouble and just give yourself a border on the separation and just know that you might have to trim your paper down a little bit. So this is a trick on that. I love to just expand my um, border a little bit and then print my targets outside of the image area and then the border is included and then I can just tear down my paper a little bit later. So then I can send that to the printer. Um, and then I can go over here, I can move to the magenta layer, send that to the printer. I can move to the yellow layer, send that to the printer. And I recommend as you send these layers to the printer, you write on the piece of transparency which channel they are. Write, write yellow on it, write magenta on it. Um, it happens every semester, someone will print one of the channels in a wrong color. So that's something that happens all the time. Uh, next up, I want to go to the black layer, but when I send the black layer, I also want to then turn on the text. So the black layer would be a combination of my halftone dot plus my text layer. Now, I just want to be really clear here is that once I put those dots down, I cannot change anything about this image. I cannot change the size of it. I cannot add new images to it. I can't really change it. Like the halftone dots cannot be um, adjusted because they are really locked down in the resolution here. And so it wouldn't, we are really specific about the size of the dots we can have in relationship to the screen. And so it's really important to actually um, save your file before you put the dots down. So this might be fine for printing, right? But what if it doesn't print well? What if you realize that the dots were actually too small and you want a bigger dot? Well, you can't open up this file with the dots already in it and draw in different dots. You have to back up to here and then put different dots on it. So what you really want to do is this version here, you want to save it once you've got the size and resolution that you want. Save a copy of this file so you can always go back to an original if your dots don't work out for whatever reason. Um, you know, things, things happen or people change their file. Sometimes I've seen people try and draw dots on top of dots. I'm just going to let you know it doesn't work out well for them. All right? So you really want to try and keep those... The, the halftone is something you have to do at the very, very, very end, and then you can't do anything else at all. Um, and if you're having trouble, and you don't actually have to um, split the channels, you can. But let's not, because why would you need to? Because you can just click them one at a time. So we'll talk about some other stuff later. But, um, I just wanted to share those steps with you. That's a CM1K halftone. And um, thank you. I will see you guys next week.